We are on Aaron Rodgers' watch as he makes a special appearance on the Pat McAfee Show. Will he announce his future plans? Plus, protesters and parents were not allowed to speak publicly at a Wisconsin school board meeting about racist behavior at a recent basketball game in Waukesha County as the investigation continues. This is News 3 Now at noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Kane. As we begin the noon hour, we are standing by to hear what Aaron Rodgers' future plans are. Right now, Rodgers is making a special appearance on the Pat McAfee Show where he could announce those plans. The four-time MVP, who frequently appears on the show, has said that he hoped to make a decision before the NFL free agency period, which begins at 3 o'clock this afternoon. He's reportedly in talks with the New York Jets. Will he move to New York, stay with the Packers, or retire? We'll continue to bring you updates as we learn more throughout this newscast and on Channel3000.com. In other news, Republicans at the Capitol are rolling out a new bill on abortion. It would create exceptions to the ban that is currently in state law, allowing for abortions in instances of rape or incest. Political reporter Will Keneally joins us live now from the Capitol with the latest. Will? Well, Mark, due to that Supreme Court decision last summer, the Wisconsin abortion law has essentially reverted back to that narrowly tailored 1849 ban that prohibits abortion except to save the life of the mother. But now Republican lawmakers are introducing a bill that would add exceptions for rape or incest only in the first trimester. This is part of a package that they are introducing that includes a bill that would also allow pharmacists to prescribe birth control. The catch, this may not pass. Republicans say that they just don't have enough votes in the state Senate and Democrats are unlikely to get on board. Um, I am super disappointed that Governor Evers has drawn such a bright line to say that unless we basically have abortion until the baby is coming out of the birth canal, he will not sign any update to the statute. Uh, I think that's reckless and irresponsible. So Evers has said that he would not sign anything that falls short of a full repeal of a state's abortion ban. And he reiterated that same in a statement today. Now, it's unlikely that we said uh, Democrats in the legislature will sign on to this. Any update essentially to Wisconsin's abortion law could put into jeopardy a lawsuit that Democrats are working on right now. Reporting from the Capitol, Will Keneally, News 3 Now. Well, thank you. Let's head to the Weather Center now. Julian Seawright has a look at your first worn forecast. Sunshine is nice. Well, sunshine is nice, Mark. And the best part about it is that we are five days away from spring. I know many of us are here like, oh, Wisconsin spring isn't real spring until about May. But folks, don't ruin it for me. I'm ready for us to actually go into spring. Now, we are going to be tracking some showers come our Thursday afternoon. You might see a couple brief showers early into our morning. But otherwise, folks, we've been tracking the system. It's going to be bringing some soggier conditions to our Thursday afternoon, evening commutes, and into our Thursday night. It'll start to dwindle a bit, but we are going to be watching for some potential transitions into some snow showers heading into our Friday. But let's go ahead and talk about today. We had sunshine earlier this morning. Now it is starting to be very cloudy for us. Clouds are going to take over throughout much of southern Wisconsin throughout the rest of our afternoon, especially heading into our evening hours. The good news is, though, those southerly winds are going to keep things rather mild into the middle 40s as we head into the later parts of our day. We'll talk more about the timing of the rain and potential snow in a few moments, Mark. Until then, back to you. Well, spring is around the corner because I have about 100 robins in my yard. <laughs> All of the and they're just chirping tree. every morning. Yeah, it's, it's nice. <laughs> All right, Julian, we'll check back. Spring may be less than a week away, but parts of the northeast are digging out after a major winter storm brought heavy snow to parts of the region. New England got as much as three feet of snow. Strong winds snapped trees and weighed down power lines, leaving tens of thousands without power. During the worst of the storm, more than 2,000 flights were canceled, many at Boston's local Logan International Airport. I got on a flight that was 10 hours later, so I've been waiting and tracking that flight, and that one was just canceled. Meanwhile, millions of people are under a flood alert in California because of another atmospheric river, the 11th this season. Rain pummeled the state, causing mudslides and washouts. Roads and, roads and bridges also washed out. An incident in the skies over the Black Sea is escalating already strained relations between the U.S. and Russia. Skylar Henry has more details from Washington. The U.S. says it will continue to fly missions near Ukraine, even after a Russian jet caused a U.S. drone to crash. Make no mistake, the United States will continue to fly and to operate wherever international law allows. 
The U.S. often flies drones over the Black Sea as it monitors the fighting in Ukraine. It's not uncommon for Russia to scramble jets to intercept them, but the Pentagon says things went too far this time, saying a Russian jet approached the drone from behind, dumping fuel. U.S. officials believe the pilot meant to come up in front of the drone so it would fly into the fuel cloud, but pulled up too soon and clipped the drone's propeller, which is located in the back. This hazardous episode is a part of a pattern of aggressive and risky and unsafe actions by Russian pilots in international airspace. Russia's ambassador was summoned to the State Department to answer for the actions. He says Russia did not cause the crash and said the drone was flying dangerously close to Russian-controlled territory. The Pentagon says it's working to declassify the video to show the world what happened. Meanwhile, some lawmakers are calling on the Biden administration to respond to the incident forcefully. The bottom line was they attacked a United States aircraft and they did it in international waters. This is not acceptable and it, 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 uh, it, it, this is simply not going to go away. This one has to be addressed and it has to be addressed with a very firm hand. There's now a race with both Russia and the U.S. trying to recover the downed drone. But America does not currently have a ship in the Black Sea. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. A national security spokesman says even if Russia beats the U.S. and recovers the drone first, it will have a hard time exploiting whatever intelligence materials is on board. Environmental and indigenous groups have filed a lawsuit against the plan to drill for oil in the National Petroleum Reserve. President Biden approved the Willow Project in Alaska's northern slope on Monday. The lawsuits argue the Biden administration's environmental analysis violates federal law. They say it needs to take into account how carbon emissions could impact threatened species. We continue with a story about a racist incident at a Muskego Beloit basketball game at a school board meeting at Muskego, Norway. Protesters and parents were barred from speaking publicly with police, blocking reporters and protesters from approaching the meeting. This stems from a March 3rd basketball game where students from Beloit found racial depictions drawn in the dust of the Muskego locker room as well as students dressing and acting racist toward Beloit players. Parents at the school board meeting stood with the players of Beloit. I have to be honest, at first I thought, you know, it would just be people just kicking under the rug, but we have so much love and support coming from some of the people in Muskego, and they didn't want this f whole community to be painted the way some folks painted it at the game. The Muskego Norway School District posted on its website Sunday that it takes the situation very seriously. An investigation is underway in collaboration with Beloit School Administrators and the Muskego Police Department. There's no word yet on whether that investigation or when that investigation will be complete. And there's more to come on News 3 Now at Noon. After a series of close calls, the FAA is holding an airline safety summit and more bad news for workers at Meta. That's coming up in the Money Watch Report. You're watching News 3 Now at Noon. Is no in your vocabulary? Uh, no. No isn't a thing at Bergstrom Automotive. Can I park my helicopter in your lot? Yes! Perfect! You've been told no before? Join the Bergstrom Automotive family for the yes. Bergstrom for the yes. It's the Mattress Madness event at Steinhoffel's. The best time to buy your new mattress. Test rest the new Beauty Rest Black for your chance to win a dream vacation to Hawaii. Steinhoffel's has all the best brands at the best prices. And with our 72 month special financing, your new mattress just got more affordable. Plus, with free delivery and our 120 night sleep guarantee, you can't go wrong. Shop in store or online at steinhoffel's.com. Clearview Cabinetry starts as a kitchen built for right now and grows with you as life changes. It's flexible by design, so you can go from doors to drawers for storage that works at every stage. Clearview Cabinetry is now 11% off. Complete your project with countertops from Menards with elegant to everyday options and easy installation that you can do yourself. Get 11% off countertops and start your next project today, now at Menards. Lake Ridge may be a new name, but it isn't a new bank. It's one built on over a century of community commitment. 
when equipped with all the knowledge and resources of 145 collective years of experience. Monona Bank and State Bank of Cross Plains are coming together as one. As Lake Ridge Bank, we're doing more together for you. Hello, I'm Roman Ryan of Ryan Funeral Homes. As a locally owned and operated funeral home, it's important to know that not all funeral homes are the same. Some other Madison area funeral homes are actually owned by corporations based outside of the United States. A corporately owned funeral home is focused on the bottom line, making services more costly. We have served local families for more than 80 years, and our priority is investing in the community and your family. In your time of need, Ryan Funeral Homes are here for you. Fresh out of Papa Murphy's Kitchen, the limited time double bacon cheddar pizza. Uh, actually, it's fresh out of my oven. Dad, it's just an expression. Nacho cheddar cheese sauce, crispy bacon, Canadian bacon? Now that is an expression. Change the way you pizza. So you just bought a vehicle from us. Will we give you a week to drive it and return it if you don't love it? Yes. Love it or return it? Yes, it's that easy. You've been told no before. Join the Bergstrom Automotive family for the yes. Bergstrom for the yes. The FAA is holding an airline safety summit today, prompted by a recent string of close calls at U.S. airports. Yesterday, we learned about yet another near collision at Washington's Reagan National Airport last week. An American Eagle jet taxied across a runway where a United Airlines plane had just been cleared for takeoff. Investigators say it appears the pilot of the American Eagle jet made a wrong turn. CBS News has confirmed the Department of Justice has opened an investigation into the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank just days after it was taken over by federal bank regulators. Federal law enforcement officials say the probe is now in its early stages. Regulators also took over a signature bank on Sunday. The FDIC is guaranteeing all deposits at both banks. And there is more bad news in Silicon Valley. Facebook's parent company, Meta, announcing another wave of layoffs yesterday. CEO Mark Zuckerberg says the company is now cutting 10,000 jobs in recruiting and tech through May and will not fill another 5,000 open positions. The social media giant previously cut 11,000 jobs late last year amid a downturn in online advertising. That's your CBS News Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Chanel Call. A rough day on Wall Street as a bank in Switzerland's stock falls 20%. The Dow Industrial is down 647 points at the noon hour. The Nasdaq off 141 and the S&P 500 down 68. That news coupled with this, or I'm sorry, today's egg prices along with Julian's midweek forecast are next. And then today on Live at 4, it's NCAA bracket time and the News 3 now anchors pair up to fill out their choices. We'll find out how you can play along at 4. Get the absolute best pricing now during Ashley's anniversary event. We've marked down everything to match online prices, all backed by our 30-day price guarantee. Get your choice of six months interest-free financing or low monthly payment options and free local delivery only at Ashley. Spring is in the air and you know what that means. It's Feldco season. Feldco season. It means 50% off windows with no money down, no payments, and no interest until 2024. So you can replace those eyesores without breaking the bank. It means getting the windows you want fast so your home's ready for the warmer weather ahead. It's the season of home renewal. It's Feldco season. This offer won't last long. Hurry. Call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for Feldco. For 75 years, DePaco has been more than local. It's a member-owned, not-for-profit cooperative that has grown into a vital community resource, a place where members can build a life worth loving. When you join DePaco, you own it. Your money stays here, enriching the lives of your friends and neighbors. DePaco strives to carry out the mission envisioned by the 10 meatpacking employees who founded it to create a brighter community for all. To learn more about DePaco and how to become a member, go to depacocom slash join. Two candidates for Supreme Court, two very different beliefs. Judge Janet Protasewicz, 
She believes women should have the freedom to make their own decisions on abortion. Extremist Dan Kelly? He supports the 1849 law that takes away women's rights and criminalizes abortion, even in cases of rape, incest, and health of the mother. So who represents you? An extremist or a common sense judge? Vote by April 4th. Celebrate Ashley's anniversary with our lowest mattress prices of the season. Get your best night's sleep on Purple, Tempur-Pedic, Serta, and more. All backed by our 30-day price guarantee. And special financing options that fit your budget at Wisconsin's number one mattress retailer, Ashley. This is a star. Chrissy Metz has a hidden talent. I did learn how to do a dolphin noise. Are you ready? Whoa! You think you could call a dolphin? They'd be like, who is that? <laughs> then Euphoria's Nika King. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. It's a bracket battle as our News 3 Now anchors compete for the best tournament picks. Find out whose brackets get busted and who has that one shining moment. Join in the bracket battle at channel3000.com and watch when our anchors reveal their picks Wednesday on News 3 Now at 10. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Pam Yankee from the Midwest Farm Report is out of the radio barn this week, so here are your farm numbers. A new report from the Alzheimer's Association shows the number of people being diagnosed continues to increase as the baby boomer population ages. Naomi Ruckham has more on the toll the disease can take on patients and their caregivers. Are you okay? Okay. William Rodriguez has been caring for his wife Maria since her Alzheimer's disease diagnosis several years ago. He says he realized something was off when his wife began misplacing things. Silverware and plates and whatever came into her mind and she would stick it underneath that bookcase. It's estimated 6.7 million Americans over the age of 65 are now living with Alzheimer's, a number projected to grow to nearly 13 million by 2050. A new Alzheimer's Association report also finds patients and doctors are not talking about memory concerns. It's important for primary care physicians to make this discussion a routine part of clinical care to get patients the diagnosis and the care that they need. Neurologist Dr. Nicole Purcell says without these essential conversations, patients lose out on early interventions and possible clinical trials for treatment. The new report also estimates more than 11 million caregivers are providing unpaid care in the U.S. Caregiving is a difficult job. Approximately 59% of caregivers report experiencing emotional stress as a result of caregiving. How important is it to both of you that you stay mentally okay and happy? That's extremely important because if I can't function for her, then... You know, it's all going to go down the drain. <laughs> Rodriguez says as his wife's memories are fading. I like to remember her the way she was, not the way she is. He focuses on remembering all the joyful moments he's had with the love of his life for more than 50 years. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. Though there is no cure for Alzheimer's, there are medications and trials aimed at slowing its progression. There are currently more than 140 therapies being tested. Let's check now back with Julian and the complete forecast. Well, we are looking at cloud cover starting to build for us. And on top of it, now we're setting the stage for some activity coming into the later part of our week. So let's talk about it. Our three things we'll need to know. We're going to be seeing 40s 
heading into tomorrow once again. But folks, we're going to also be watching for some rain that's going to show itself once we get into the overnight into our mainly Thursday afternoon. Occasional rain is going to stick around. Then we have an opportunity to see some snow heading into our late Thursday night, transitioning early Friday morning and potentially later into the day as well. So let's go ahead and kind of break down what we're going to be seeing over the back end of the work week. Starting with our current setup as of right now, this is going to be the system that's going to be bringing in a bit of that activity for us once we get into our Thursday and for our Friday. Right now it's mild. We're getting those southerly winds starting to keep things on the milder side. That's why the temperatures are going to withstand into the 40s throughout the next couple of days. So walking through what we can expect for us. It's going to be quiet, but it's also going to be rather breezy. Mid 40s by week time we get to a 3 p.m. hour. Some areas into the upper 40s. 5 p.m. commutes is going to be rather fine. However, cloud cover is going to take over and not really break for us throughout the next about 24 hours, maybe even longer. Once we get into midnight areas near north northern parts of Wisconsin may see a couple of showers starting to develop, but we're going to stay mainly dry. So Thursday morning as you're heading out, it's actually going to be rather mild. A light jacket is all you're really going to need, not anything too heavy. And in the afternoon hours, that's when we're going to start to see the activity develop. Showers are going to start to, on to the western side, especially for the southwestern side. From Grant County, Lafayette, and parts of Rock and Green County, looking for some shower development. Once we get into the lunchtime hour, then once again to 3 p.m., that's also when we're going to see a bit more widespread showers throughout much of southern Wisconsin. But take notes, the temperatures are going to stay within the 40s, and the wind speeds are going to taper off just a bit. Say we're windy early into our Thursday morning. Now we're just going to be on the breezier side throughout much of our Thursday afternoon. Then they're going to slowly lose their intensity as we continue throughout the rest of our Thursday. But 5 p.m. commute, dinner time, we're going to see a bit of some brief showers, but not much in terms of snowfall until we get into the overnight. Might see that development transitioning once we get into the overnight hours of the Friday morning. But Friday afternoon, as of right now, is looking to be rather clear, but much colder as that cold front switches its way through. Now, outside of that, this is how much rain we're anticipating about a quarter to a half of an inch throughout much of southern Wisconsin, a little bit less for the Dells and for Monroe and Janesville, looking for a tenth to a quarter of an inch. So not a whole lot of a washout, but still enough to give us a nice little drink of some water. And outside of that, here's a look at some weekend forecast for us. Saturday and for Sunday, it's going to start off on the colder side, but Sunday, at least we're going to be warming back up. Here's a look at our 10 day forecast. Temperatures will be their best for Wednesday and Thursday. Heading into the weekend, we're going to be colder, much colder. We're looking at lower 30s, upper 20s. But the good news is, folks, we do welcome in spring on Monday, and it is starting off in spring like fashion. And we're going to be seeing those temperatures into the lower 40s and then warming back up into the 50s by the time we head into next week. And on top of it, we could see some spring like showers, Mark. Well, maybe we turn the corner. Maybe we turn the corner. Or maybe not. This is Wisconsin. <laughs> hey, it's a coin flip. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Julian, thank you. Well, you may want to be a little more cautious in the kitchen and make sure your groceries are clean. The 2023 Shopper's Guide to Pesticides in Produce is out, and strawberries and spinach own the top two slots in the so-called Dirty Dozen. The report also says nearly 90% of blueberries and green bean samples had concerning findings, including more kinds of pesticides than in previous years. Avocados are on the top of the list for the least contaminated foods, followed by sweet corn. Speaking of, there's more to come on News Now at Noon. I'm next with Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. If you like your onion rings to crunch a bunch, grab your appetite and a cold drink and join us right here in the Test Kitchen. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. At Lawton Cates, your life counts is more than just a slogan. It's providing guidance after a serious accident. From the first phone call, we're by your side, helping with the important decisions. Not just for your medical care, but for your family's peace of mind. The Lawton Cates team combines experience and genuine compassion because we know how much is at stake, and we're dedicated to ensuring you can heal and move forward. At Lawton Cates, your life counts. Call today for a free consultation. Do you suffer with pain, numbness, and tingling in the hands or feet? Commonly diagnosed as peripheral neuropathy, are you taking drugs such as Lyrica or Gabapentin that have serious side effects and often do not relieve your symptoms? Your doctor has told you, you may just have to live with the pain. Peripheral neuropathy is a result of damage to the nerves, often causing burning, weakness, pain, numbness, 
tingling, and the most debilitating balance problems. Our facility uses multiple therapeutic methods to help give you relief from neuropathy symptoms with no injections and no drugs. You may start seeing relief after only a few sessions. To determine if your neuropathy symptoms can be relieved, we will do a consultation to evaluate the extent of your condition. Call us today to schedule your neuropathy consultation to find out if you're a candidate for our therapy. Call today. It's Stop the Madness Month. If your energy bills are too high, stop the madness. If your comfort is out of balance and you go straight from heat to AC, stop the madness. If you've had it with outside noise, stop the madness. Get insulated now and save up to $2,000 with the energy tax credit plus our madness discount. But the clock runs out at the end of the month, so call today. USA Insulation. Sexual assault of an 11-year-old. No prison time. He raped a military veteran, left her for dead just two and a half years. Raped a mentally disabled 14-year-old. Probation. How the heck did this happen? Janet Protasiewicz. If you could go back in time, would you have ruled any differently? I would say no. Really? No time in prison? I would say no. Protasiewicz set violent criminals free. Again and again. Tell Judge Protasiewicz, stop protecting criminals. When it comes to onion rings, it seems that they're either really good or really bad, but never in between. Well, since I'm an onion ring lover, we set out to come up with a recipe that's not just really good, but one that's exceptional, especially if you love them crispy crunchy. We started by peeling three to four large Spanish onions and cutting them into thick slices. I would say about a third of an inch thick. After separating them into rings, we coat them with buttermilk and let them soak. Next, we mix together our batter, which is simply some flour, baking powder, salt, and a little cayenne pepper. To that, we add vegetable oil, a splash of lemon juice, an egg, and a bit of water. Now, we shake the excess buttermilk off each onion ring and dip it into the batter before carefully placing it into some hot oil. The oil should be hot, but not smoking. That way, it's hot enough to cook them but not so hot that they burn. Once they're golden on both sides, we take them out and let them drain on some paper towels. This way they won't be too greasy. And that's all there is to it. So if you like an onion ring that has lots of flavor and is so crunchy it can be heard across the room, you're going to love these. I really do hope you'll go online and get the recipe for our crispy buttermilk onion rings, which in my opinion are a hands-down winner. I'm Howard of the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a crunchy way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. And we have some breaking news. Aaron Rodgers has said that he, quote, intends to play for the New York Jets. The announcement came just moments ago on the Pat McAfee show. A deal has not been made. So we'll continue to bring you updates as we learn more on later newscast and all day long on Channel 3000. Dot com And here's Julian with one final check of the forecast. I guess that's some news. Yeah, that is some news. But I guess the easier thing to predict now is actually the weather than it is <laughs> Rogers' decision. Over the next couple of days, folks, enjoy the 40s. But we are looking for some rain showers heading into our Thursday afternoon. Could see some early in the morning, but mainly going to be widespread for our Thursday afternoon and evening hours. Friday is going to be much colder and heading into the weekend as well. Lower 30s to not even hitting the freezing point for Saturday. But, folks, we are looking for warmer temperatures as we welcome in spring next Monday. All right. Thank you, Julian. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.